Prodigal Son first season just ended. Oh my gosh. So I, hi there, this is Tom, it's Tom's Tech Show. Today we're talking about some entertainment stuff and I have talked about this show called Prodigal Son. If you like scripted procedural crime shows uh, and you like them with a lot of twists and twists that you don't see coming and twists that make it so that both you and Mrs. Tech Show while sitting on the couch get up and go, oh my gosh, both at the same time then this is the show for you. Um, the Prodigal Son, um, I guess there is an underground group of people who love the show. They call themselves Prodigies. Um, so you know it has a, it has a community behind it already. Um, even in just, you know, the first it, 20 episodes in the first season cut short by uh, stuff going on. So uh, the show, Prodigal Son, is a fresh take on a crime franchise with provocative and outrageous lead character and darkly comedic tone. From Emmy Award-nominated executive producer Greg Berlanti and Sarah Sketchter, uh, and writers Chris Fedak and Sam Sclaver. Uh, okay, so they're, they're from Riverdale and The Flash, so this kind of superhero kind of things, which is weird, but Chris Fedak, which is Deception and Chuck... Uh, and then Sclaver, which is Deception and Bored to Death. So it, it's got some dark overtones, definitely, and um, uh, continues to be. <laughs> uh, the series, of course, stars Tom Payne, who came from The Walking Dead, who is just, he's, he's brilliant at the role. You, you don't know what's coming next, and... Uh, the oddity things that he does. I mean, so if you take, um, you know, many TV shows will do this. Many crime shows will do this. They'll have a, a, a criminal team and then they'll have one person who's a little bit quirky like Monk, right? Monk was there. He did kind of weird things and, and crazy things, but that was more geared towards comedy. And this one is more geared towards the kind of the macabre, right? A little bit dark, a little bit, you know, psychologically, you know, depressed kind kind of darkness. And so it just continues to be a show that, you know, I just, I can't say if you haven't watched it, you've got nothing else to do. And you like these kind of a little bit dark criminal procedural shows and scripted shows. This is one to start watching. This is one to get through. You know, I mean, we're hoping that season two gets greenlit. I mean, the, Reading the, looking at the ratings, it started um, at 4 million viewers and never went below 3 million viewers. And the end, uh, last show ended up with 3.5 million viewers of that episode. So to maintain that audience throughout its entire run of 20 episodes on Fox um, is, is just amazing. And I really hope that they uh, can... Keep it going, because uh, we have Tom Payne, who plays Malcolm Bright. He's the son of uh, Dr. Martin Whitley, also known, a.k.a. the surgeon, who is a serial killer, who is in prison. And, of course, there's Michael Sheen. He always plays crazy, often plays crazy, quirky characters, who just, he just does a little bit on the edge of nuts really well. He was in... Uh, the one show Good Omens, right, that uh, aired recently. I think that was on uh, Amazon, which was just crazy, quirky, just kept on going. I think there's going to be, is there going to be maybe a second season of that? I, I, don't, I don't know. But um, he's just incredible in, in the role. If, I mean, if you've ever seen anything else that has Michael Sheen in it, he plays crazy like no one else plays crazy. And, of course, we have Bellamy Young, who plays Jessica Whitley, who was his... Uh, wife at the time with all these murders where he was being the serial killer and did she know about it did she not know about it we explore all that through the tv series and then we have um lou Diam diamond phillips who is the police chief well he's the head of the the crimes unit uh in the new york police department he's the head of the unit and he, I guess, you know, and his character, Gil Arroyo and Jessica Whitley used to almost had a thing way back when. And that kind of plays through, you know, the whole season so far. 
And then we have Halston Sage, who many people know. She was in the Orville and some other shows, but she, what she couldn't do, right, in the Orville, kind of, they kind of made her a little naive and things and stuff in the Orville and tried to bring out some stronger characteristics from her in the Orville, but I don't think the writers ever realized what she could do. Now that she's in Prodigal Son, she is incredible in, in her role and in, in what she does, just continues to be. Uh, some of the inst uh, police, other police inspector people, uh, Aurora Perio, uh playing Danny Powell and Frank Hartz playing JT. Uh, they do really well. They're supporting cast. They continue to be, you know, uh, a big part of the show, even though they're supporting cast, they still get a lot of things. And then Keiko Ajina, who plays Dr. Adrisa, Gulfoy, uh, oh my gosh, she is she's sick and macabre. I mean, to be she's the the mortician basically, uh, and the and the medical examiner, I guess. But she gets a little dark down there with Malcolm Bright in the show, and just continues to be a lot of hilarity, a lot of funny, funny stuff. There is there is a lot of comedy in this things, but it gets. It gets stressful. There are certain, I mean, I was thinking back, you know, there was a show I watched back in, in the late eighties, uh, called wise guy, which is about a guy who was part of the organized crime bureau who then went undercover and was trying to help dig everything out of, uh, you know, help break up some of the organized crime stuff, I think in New York or something like that. And every episode was the, they cliff hung the end of every single episode. And it just, it, some of the things like that get to be nerve wracking. And for some reason, we keep wanting to come back for more. And that is Prodigal Son. That is definitely this show. Um, just keep, uh, I can't, I'm just, I'm like shakingly riled, you know, still. We got done watching the last episode, uh, an hour and a half ago and I'm still like I cannot believe I cannot believe I cannot believe and reading some of the things online um, I'm not giving anything away of course because if if you're gonna watch it and go through it um, you really need to go completely open to what's going to happen and took us 100% by surprise took us completely out of our chair I I came close to spilling my drink. I, you know, just, you know, I think I scared the cat across the room. The chicken is looking at me like, what in the world is wrong with you? So it, <laughs> it, it was, I mean, there must be, it's like, there must be, I'm not saying, you know, we, you know, it'd be nice to have a second season. No, there must be a second season. We cannot, cannot leave things like this. We can't, you know, it just, can't again happen. All right. Well, so there you go. That's another big recommendation, of course, for Prodigal Son. And now that the first season is over, I, I don't know what I'm going to watch for that that on the edge of your seat kind of thrill that that you can get from these shows. Uh, man, take the writers of Prodigal Son and have them put that kind of passion into a Star Trek TV series keeping all of the original profile from the you know original and next series and next generation and give them that and put them on that and oh my gosh we would be explosively better because they're so talented with what they are doing to tie all these 20 episodes together from the first season to be able to put it out Ugh. all right well I gotta go sit down and relax. I got maintenance for a client coming up in a couple hours and I, I need to go calm down. I need to somehow calm down. Okay. It'll be fine. We'll get a second season. It'll be okay. We'll make it through this. Okay. All right. Go watch the show. Thanks for watching this. Everybody take care. Mm -hmm.